the Empire is in trouble. The most popular faction across all three games, the Lore's de facto protagonist against Chaos, and one of the most diverse factions in the setting, has finally hit the Immortal Empire's beta for Warhammer 3, and it needs some help. In this video today, I want to discuss some of the issues with the current Empire campaign, then at the end of the video, discuss some ways or speculation to overhaul the experience for the Sons of Sigmar. Most of this is just a caffeine-fueled rant of me talking about a big shortcoming of a race that I find crucial to the balance of the game's enjoyment, as well as the power balance of the Realm of Chaos map. So some of it might be harebrained, but some of it might be totally cogent. Take what you wish with a grain of salt, as I mainly want to open a discussion here on the topic more than anything. And that's another quick thing I want to bring up. I know that any veteran of Total War Warhammer always prefers the combined map, but from a business perspective, we know that Creative Assembly is going to develop for the campaign that comes packaged with Game 3 first, before then adding them into the Immortal Empires. And we've seen that all throughout Warhammer 2, so we should expect the same treatment here. So while you might think who cares about Realm of Chaos, it's still a valid talking point worth bringing up to help deliver justification on a wider scale into the Immortal Empires. And as always, guys, if you end up enjoying the content, please don't forget to like, comment, or subscribe. Help me defeat the greatest boss of all time, the YouTube algorithm. But let's get started here on fixing the empire. So here we are, turn one, Karl Franz, the emperor in Altdorf, let's unite the empire. Only you can't do that too well. In the current iteration of the game, this is on Immortal Empires, of course, because you cannot play them on the Realm of Cha uh, Chaos campaign, the Electric Count system, which was introduced with the... Um, Hunter and the Beast, I think that's the name of the DLC for Warhammer 2, um, as part of an Empire rework, is a really cool system. It's a really awesome way for you to basically bring the individual Elector Counts into your uh, realm, in, into, into the Empire. And you deal with this whole Imperial Authority here, and that gives you basically a currency in which you can use um, Prestige to kind of help you... Um, confederate these individual electric counts and this is a big point of the lore too right the uh carl franz is uniting the empire under one individual and the electric counts in and of themselves are very autonomous under the emperor it's kind of an interesting little dichotomy between the emperor and the electric counts it's it's a funky thing but in the current iteration of the game the electric count system coupled with the new allied war coordination system with warhammer 3 two systems from two different games seem to conflict and the ability to confederate all of these guys actually is extremely stacked against you the game just won't really let it happen now to be fair creative assembly has addressed the fact that confederating is difficult and it should be easier in the next patch sometime in september and as of the release of this video this is like the very very beginning of september so that might kind of fix things here but by and large this is supposed to be a land of diverse belief systems, diverse units, diverse focuses within those units, and I just don't see it. The game, the game is very stagnant with the Empire when, if you take a look at the roster here, it's not very robust Monte. It's, in fact, very grim. You have the extended roster, which was, again, added with each one of the respective Elector Counts, granting you access to one of these special either... Knightly Orders, these three right here, or just some other units like the Caraburg Greatswords, stuff like that. And this was cool. This did bring a little bit of diversity into the game for the Empire, but by and large, it is a very thin roster. And if I compare this roster to the Warriors of Chaos, which just got a DLC, it is just disgusting. Now, to be fair, each one of these is like, you know, duplicated, right? So it's like I got one Marauder. Then I've got one, two, three, four marked versions of that Marauder. So it's kind of like I'm cheating and showing you this. But even if I take a look at, say, the High Elves, this is a end of game two, post multiple DLCs and reworks, High Elf roster, which has gotten quite a bit added to it. It has its extended roster from stuff like Eltharian or Imric, but by and large, it's a very nice, very robust roster of units that didn't even exist in tabletop, like the Silver and Guard uh, or the Rangers, stuff like that. Things that kind of fit holes in the roster that are created by Total War Warhammer as a, a result of playing on a map and style like Total War Warhammer. 
And Empire, I think, has a lot of these holes, has a lot of these issues. Where is it? Uh, has a lot of these issues. It's just a little too bare bones, especially the lords, right? I mean, you don't have any caster lords here. Even then, you only have one golden order uh, caster, and it's Balthazar Gelt. So you just have all these issues with the roster. You have all these issues mechanically with the campaign. And then you have the, the issue that the actual campaign itself is very drab, very boring. You're just simply Carl Franz, who is a cool enough character, right? We we get Galmaraz, we get some cool stuff here. Funny that he's got Dragon Tooth, his, um, uh, what's it called? His Rune Fang when he is holding Galmaraz. But that's not here nor there. So I think by kind of addressing a lot of these things, by taking a look at, uh, by the way, this is a, a revamped uh, technology screen that we got with the rework here. Taking a look at these electoral machinations, which is very similar to the intrigue and court of um, the High Elves, which was, is, is already a bogus system. It's not an amazing system. It's not a very interesting system. Looking at the Elector Count system, which again falls flat because of the two conflicting systems in existing in Warhammer 1 and 2, or I'm sorry, 2 and 3. And also kind of keep in note, with the way reinforcements work, helping out any of the Elector Counts during their Elector Counts, like, hey, come help my army out, pay some um, prestige and come help me, you have to wait a minute and 45 seconds or two minutes to go and reinforce any of these electric counts. So you're you're running into all these issues where the game just mechanically won't let you really do anything. And the electors, again, by and large, prefer to just kind of die on their own and not really become a part of the Empire or, or, or uh, join a military alliance, any of those things. So... Let's now, we've discussed quite a few issues, and if you have any other big issues with the Empire that I just completely glossed over, you're like, yo, dude, this is a glaring one, let it be known in the comment section below. As always, guys, I try to make sure um, as much information is disseminated out as possible. I said disseminated, that's right. So make sure you let it be known in the comment section below. So let's talk a little bit now about some ways we could fix the Empire, the Empire could be improved. So let's start off with a discussion about the Elector Counts. And I'm going to jump back into the game in a little bit to talk a little bit more about this. But the Elector Counts, by and large, are very interesting individual characters. And I would love to see a DLC that focuses on fleshing out the Empire in a lot of ways. And we kind of got this with Warriors of Chaos, right? Warriors of Chaos and the Champions of Chaos, or Cock DLC, focuses 100% on Chaos. There's no versus portion of the DLC pack. There's no this faction versus this faction. It's just a nonstop blast in your face of Chaos, getting reworked, getting added and uh, stuff layered into it, all these things. And, and as a quick sidebar, that DLC is huge when it comes to Warriors of Chaos, but there's still stuff left on the table that is pretty evident that's kind of paving the way for future DLC. Either Exalted Hero, um, Sorcerer Lord, or uh, Chaos Lord, or even Sorcerer options that don't exist between certain marks. So you can see that kind of coming in the future. Again, neither here nor there. So here is an old, <laughs> a very old, picture of a lot of the old um, Elector Counts. Valmir von Raukov, uh, Ludwig Schwarzhofen, who got its own, a, a newer model in the later days. Uh, Kurt Helleborg, also, who got a newer model. But Aldebrand Ludenhoff here. Marius Lietdorf, also got a new model. Uh, Boris Toddbringer. Uh, so you can see that th there are these existing uh, standards of having a really cool, unique look for a lot of these Elector Counts. And I think that that's something that needs to kind of happen. If you did an Empire-themed DLC that was just strictly the Empire, call it the Elector Counts. That would be some of the Elector Counts. If you name that as the DLC, people wouldn't even need to see what's in the DLC and people would buy it. You know, <laughs> like, oh, CA memed that hard? Well, here's the money. So taking a look at this, I think it's like, okay, uh, from just a standpoint of pure aesthetic, pure visuals, make each of the Elector Counts have a uniqueness to themselves. Sure, you can go the whole nine yards and give me a fully unique, awesome custom model. But when you kind of compare, say, High Elf characters or uh, Warriors of Chaos characters or Dwarf characters, well, maybe Dwarf characters, not so much. Um... But a lot of the other varying races, characters, they, each one is extremely unique and different looking. By and large, when you look at each one of these Elector Counts, uh, Boris Toddbringer, Valmir here, uh, Alban Ludenhoff, Marius Lietorf, the four of them, it's not that they look the same, but 
they look very similar. So they can just kind of have um, the same asset as far as horse goes. Okay, cool. But give me a little bit of a different face, a different uh, chest, a different um, um, rune fang look to them. Give me a little bit of uniqueness. It doesn't need to be a full blown out Azazel character or a village character. Both are so drastically different looking. So I think that the request or or the ask of a unique set of electric counts is not too tall because like i said by and large they're not terribly unique looking from a model standpoint between each one and i think that this kind of comes together in another form by a midden land dlc in in, in the olden days uh, they said that Boris Toddbringer would have his day, and I want it to happen. We need it to happen because I think that this could be a really cool way to flesh out the empire. Because you're giving the Midland, you're giving Midland an actual stake in the game. Midland and Altdorf have had an antagonistic relationship as far as Warhammer One, Two, and Three are concerned with their diplomacy. So make Midland an actual faction that can have a true antagonistic relationship, rather than just simply, oh, it's an NPC faction with different colors and Boris. Toddbringer's there and he kind of looks like shit. So give us a Boris Toddbringer. Give us a high priest R. Ulrich Emil Valgier here and give us a, a, a caster character. And with that, have a cult of Sigmar, which was a big portion of the uh, uh, the Empire, and then have a cult of Ulrich. There were many cults of the different gods, a cult of tall and so on and so forth. And with that, you can layer in almost like a mechanic like you get with Kislev, where you're working towards a split between the cults, or maybe a split between secular and non-secular, and that was a big part of the knightly orders. You have the Templar orders and the secular knightly orders, orders that were following a specific god, like the orders that were dedicate to Tall or Moore or Ulric, Knights of the White Wolf, so on and so forth. Or you'd have Templar orders. Reichsguard would be an exemplar example example of a. Um, Another knightly order that is a huge part of the game already. So Templar and, secu and uh, uh, secular orders could be a really cool way to bring knightly orders into a bigger fashion with certain locations. And I'll talk about that in just a little bit more. But moving down here, this is the old Middenland army list from Storm of Chaos. And you can even already see here, right? These are the Tutagen Guard. This would be sick because we get a, a unit uh, like the Great Swords that are moderately armored. Is it moderately armored? Is it like 80 armor? I can't remember off the top of my head. We'll jump back in the game and I'll answer that in a bit. Uh, and they have great swords and that gives him some AP and anti-infantry. Give us these dudes. These are basically human hammerers. And, and let me go to town with them. They're essentially unmounted Knights of the White Wolf. If you kind of look at it from a, um, a, a, like a visual mechanic. And from there you get Prayers of Ulrich. And I think that this could be really cool, right? You have the, you have the Sigmar Warrior Priest, the Warrior Priest of Sigmar. Give me a warrior priest of Ulrich, a priest of Ulrich, in the same way that we kind of have that with the patriarchs of Kislev. And Kislev's pantheon shares a lot of similarity to a lot of the uh, Empire pantheons. Um, but I think, again, just having this sort of diverse army that is similar enough to the Empire, but borrows a lot of different conventions for Middenland, for Middenheim, I think would be so goddamn cool. Seneschal, the White Wolf, that's one of the coolest goddamn names I've ever heard of. Grandmaster of the Knights of the White Wolf here, Priest of Ulrich, you can kind of see this put together. This is a, a super old list, um, but still pretty sick. The Tutagen Guard, White Wolf Hammer, full plate armor. Um, you can upgrade them as well. Here, let me actually zoom in a little bit more here. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, hunting Hounds. Again, a really cool way to just get some skirmish-style uh, hound units added into the roster. Great. Warriors of Ulric. And here's... look. Wait, 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 wait for it. Boom! Wolfkin. Holy shit, that would be sick. Like, I would love to see these types of units added into the game. Uh, Wolfkin could basically be... Um, flagellants, for lack of a better word. Just to kind of, like give you a one-to-one -one comparison i suppose even though it's not really that way but still still and i just think that this is such a cool diverse but but moderately moderately spicy army right like you're not i'm not talking about hey creative assembly make me all these crazy ass custom assets i'm saying take the existing assets and basically kind of tweak them out to look like this and there are mods that do this and i think that it could be just a great way to finally flesh out and give some some pump to Midland. Midland already is a 
Dark Fortress in the Realm of Chaos campaign. And I think that kind of tells me maybe that there's that there have something planned for Midland. They've said that um, Boris Taubringer has his day coming, so on and so forth. And I think that those could be great ways to really spice up the playstyle because you add in Midland, Middenheim, and uh, Middenland is part of Middenheim. And, and then from there, you go and wait, isn't it the way around? Oh, God damn it, whatever. It's, they're there and they're, they're ones within the other. Um, and then from there, you have an FLC, a full Empire Rework FLC that you could say adds in all of this variety, all of these knightly orders. Let me do this button. To you know, Here's the new Marius Leetdorf and who uh, Kurt Helborg uh, models from 8th edition. This is the 8th edition army book here for the Empire. But Knights of the Broken Sword, Knights Panther, which are based in Midland, Knights of the Sigmar's Blood, uh, Knights of the White Wolf, which again, based in Midland. We already have Knights of the Blazing Sun. And I just think that you could have so much more fun and variety being brought into the game by really sprucing up with these knightly orders, right? I actually have never seen that red. That's pretty sweet. Reichsguard Knight, again, they are knightly order. These three, the, these two already exist in the game, right? Knights of the Blazing Sun and Reichsguard. It's funny is Knights of the Blazing Sun, Blazing Sun are a small order. Like they are a not a large one. So I think that across knightly orders, across adding in some sort of mechanic here to give us uh, more exciting empire play with um, what am I trying to say? Uh, with 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 Middenland, it gives us this opportunity to kind of have a fleshed out system. Now let's jump back into the game here real quick to talk a little bit more about those nightly orders and the electric counts. So for the electric count system, you could do a lot of fun. You could have a lot of fun with this mechanically, visually, everything. And I think that having a wider appeal to the system is crucial. Fixing it, yeah, that's just patch. I mean, that's not like a that's not like a DLC thing, right? Like. Hey, we, the DLC is we fixed the elector counts. Here's $15. You know what? The way the gaming industry goes now, I wouldn't be surprised. But imagine if this elector count system, as part of a, of, a, of a wider mechanical system that I just can't visualize right now, had it so that, okay, you either defeat the Lord and you get an auto confederation, or maybe you have an objective where you want to have an autonomous empire, where you have these guys as vassals rather than actual confederated um, uh, individuals which creates a way different style of empire. And with the way that the war coordination and the empire, or, uh, the ally system works now, it just needs some AI tweaks, but I actually really do like it. It's a lot better. And I think that that could be a really, really great way to make this electric count system feel like it is fun. It is interesting. It's got more teeth to it. And then on nightly orders, I think that, that you could kind of really expand that. And we kind of already get it right here, right? Recruit from the Elector Count state troops. But knightly orders could be done almost in the same way, right? Like a blessed spawn style of, uh, blessed spawning style of recruitment, just like this. And maybe it's region specific. Or maybe you have to do a very specific campaign objective. Maybe it's just something that basically makes it so that you have to do criteria to unlock them, build a building, whatever it is. But basically, give us those knightly orders as an injection into the campaign. That way it's just a little bit more fun, it's a little bit more interesting. And with it, you get this kind of interesting knightly order, rather than just simply, yeah, they're there, go go ahead and go ahead and confederate that guy and you're gonna get the knights and more. I'm like, eh, okay, I guess I'll do it. And most importantly, most importantly, amongst everything, allow them to be part of the roster. Because right now, sure, you've got the Reichsguard, they're great. The Empire Knights are better Reichsguard, right? Then you've got the Knights of the Blazing Sun, or uh, uh, Knights of the Blazing Sun. So those are all cool. But I would love to be in multiplayer using the Stubborn Bulls. Like, I know I'm going to play a certain, certain faction. Stubborn Bulls makes sense here. Or Knights of Moor, or Knights of the Everlasting Light. I'd love to have them as existing parts of the roster. Same thing here with the Caribou Greatswords. Just make them a Regiment of Renown for all, for all intents and purposes. Oh, which reminds me. Uh, Greatswords, 95 armor, not 80 armor. 95 armor. So... Again, a lot of these ideas are harebrained ideas. And, and and you could even look at something like the Steam Tank. The Steam Tank had a Hellblaster variant and a Mortar variant. You can take existing things and just make different variations of them, which sounds lazy, but it adds kind of that level of diversity and it adds that level of customization to my roster that I had in tabletop that I think is missing from Empire right now. It feels so flat when in the when in reality you just had so many tools at your disposal that I think that the game just currently lacks with them.
So go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. Are there other things you would like to see? I, I mean, I didn't even mention that there are really, oh, I guess I loosely did, but there's not really any Lord casters. We could go, ha we could have a ball talking about that. Let me know what you are thinking. Do you think that the next DLC that isn't uh, Chaos Dwarfs, because I think that's the next one, the next Lord Pack DLC, do you think it's going to be a Versus DLC, or do you think it's going to be a Champions of Chaos DLC? And if it is a Champions of Chaos, do you would you like to see a fully fleshed out, robust Empire one? Or would you just simply like to see Boris Toddbringer versus, I don't know, a Beastman or a, uh, a an Ogre Kingdom, something like that. Whatever, I'm just kind of throwing stuff out there. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. I know this is kind of a harebrained, low-tech thing, but I wanted to kind of have this discussion because I think a lot of people, it's kicking around a lot of people's heads because this is one of the most popular factions in the game, and it just isn't fun or interesting right now because of so many shortcomings mechanically and so many shortcomings from a roster and, well, again, I'm saying mechanically now is campaign mechanic versus mechanically versus bugs. <laughs> so both of those things are working against you in an empire campaign. But again, thank you so much for watching here today. Have a good one and take care.